To them, sir. Hello, it's Conway here. One of those planes you promised me. I've still got other people to get out. The whole town's on fire and the gorillas are nearly here. That runway won't take heavy jets. We've sent you every other plane we can commandeer, even freighters. Now, Fenner's in charge. They should be there any time. Now, take your people and clear out. My people? What about the rest of them here? Richard, you'll focus in here. Yes, Bill. We've had a lot of flack from your local military authority. They have forbidden us to let you evacuate any of their nationals. The SG says you are to take only your own group, only those you have listed. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you, Bill, but it's not a... Hey, it's the planes. Right here. Just a minute. We think the planes are here. Thank you. Oh, Michael, what's happened? They must have blown up the generator. Come on. Those planes can't land without light. Oh, Hong Kong. Come in, Hong Kong. Let's go.
get back to the main building. Teach me the language sometime. He's away. We go on the next plane. Bring out everybody that's left. Right. journey ahead of us. I suggest you make yourselves as comfortable as possible. Right? Fine. Okay. George, see if you can find some food. Uh, where are we heading? Hong Kong. Who are you? I don't remember listing you. Uh, yeah. Well, I sort of arrived the last minute. Name's Harry Lovett, the comedian. <laughs> Just finished three solid weeks, top of the bill, Saigon, USO. Terrific audience, those guys. I love them. Saigon? What were you doing in Bascula? Yeah, well, we had a few drinks, and someone said, let's go see the temples, and there was this plane, and we had a few more drinks, and uh, all of a sudden, we were in the middle of the jungle, Temple of Bascula, it was pretty funny. <laughs> then the shells start falling, and nobody's laughing. <laughs> all right, I'll get some particulars from you later. Hi, name's Harry Lovett, the comedian. Sam Cornelius, the engineer. Sandwiches. Milk. Somebody at headquarters has a sense of humor. Dish it up. I'm gonna make up my report. Well, I can still remember the details.
course. You're Sally Hughes of Newsweek. Yes. I'm George Conway, London Express. Hello. Richard's my brother. I, I was covering on the peace talks when the whole thing blew up. Well, did you, did you get some good stuff on the airfield just now? Look, I'm through with all this, and I'm tired. I'm sorry. Flying this thing, we're in for a rough night. I uh, just found some jungle juice. Can I freshen your milk? Sure. It's pretty rough, huh? Yeah. Were well, you on a project back there? Yeah. <laughs> really? Really? Well, take it easy. Uh, well, gentlemen, I, uh, not been too successful up front. Could I, uh, interest you in a little bourbon? Oh, you're our man. You yes. bet. Great. Great. Well, God save the queen. <laughs> Cheers. Conway? Mr. Conway, wake up. Look outside. We're traveling in the wrong direction. Look, I know I flunked Boy Scout, but from what I remember, the sun rises in the east. Hong Kong is east, we're going west. He's right. The sun's behind us. It's desert down there. Must be a reason. Well, it's too good a pilot to get lost. What goes on? What's happening? Hey, now. Meet Saint Negrin. What's this, friend? It's a hijacking. Hijacking a DC-3? Come on. That's what it looks like. Well, what are we gonna do? What do you suggest? He could be a maniac. We gotta do something. Such as. Be caught. Now, listen, everybody. There's nothing we can do about this for the moment, so I suggest you all sit down and, as far as possible, relax. That guy has a gun! There's nothing we can do about it until he lands. Now, please, sit down. George. Strip, 
Castillo. Other facts to consider are these, that the fuel was waiting, the armed men were waiting, and they wouldn't let us off. It was an ordinary hijacking that had kept us back there in the desert. Exactly. It could be political. That means you, Richard. I doubt it. The whole point is I'm not political. Oh, come on, Conway. You'd be a prize in anybody's book. And for good measure, they've got two journalists and, by his own account, a famous comedian. Very funny, but what about you, Cornelius? Maybe they want you. Who are you? I'm somebody flying in a strange plane to a strange place with a lunatic pilot, and I'm goddamn trying to find out why. That's who I am. I don't know. See if that oxygen equipment works. Thank you. If the altitude gets you, swallow hard. Or hold your nose and blow. That's it. Slowly, slowly. Is that any better? Uh, I feel like we're heading for outer space. Easy. Mm. You know a guy can get to like this. He's losing his left engine. Seatbelts, 
look after the others. How are the others? Shaken, but okay. He's had it. There's a map. Uh, you see that spot where he's marked? I bet that's where we refueled. There's the end of civilization. We must be a thousand miles beyond that. Just a blank here on, on the map. Hey, what's happening, Conway? Conway! Don't tell him about this, George. Conway! How are you? Hello. Where the hell are we? Down on solid ground and it feels great. What are you doing? Listen, buddy, I don't know about you, but I'm scared and this helps. Well, what's the situation? The pilot's dead. Well, where are we? As far as I can make out in an unexplored part of the world. How do we get out? Well, the moment we don't, we stay here. Only a fully equipped expedition could last outside. So here we stay, huh? Calm and cool. We're sure gonna be cool. <laughs> it's not so bad. We've got uh, blankets, a stove, emergency rations. We can get through the days. The nights may be a little bit more difficult. But we'll manage until somebody finds us. Till somebody finds us. They will. Another one to work. Good. Here. Here. Drink this. Hasn't got much taste, but it's hot. It's not if it hasn't got any taste at all. <laughs> I'll try one then. All right. There. Mr. Conway, the lights out there. Mr. Conway, the lights out there. There are people out there, moving in the snow, coming towards us down that mountain. There is something. They found us. I knew they would. I knew it. I am from a nearby Lamasery. My name is Chang. Mine is Richard Conway. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> Forgive me. I hadn't expected anybody in this part of the world to talk English. I was an undergraduate at Oxford in my young days. It was there I had the opportunity of improving my knowledge of your language. You speak it very well. You have no idea how welcome you are. Yesterday our plane left Baskula for Hong Kong, but we suddenly found ourselves hijacked and traveling in the opposite direction. The pilot... Where is your pilot? He was killed in the crash. 
May I see him? Please. Narita, may Grim tell you. Mr. Chang, you're obviously on a journey of your own, but could you possibly take us to your lavatory? I should consider it an honor. You will need suitable clothes for the journey. It is not particularly far, but it is quite difficult. <laughs> I suggest we start at daybreak. Welcome to Shangri-La, Mr. Conway. You see, we are sheltered by mountains on every side. A strange phenomenon for which we are very grateful. Come, let me show you.
This is Brother Tolen. He will show you to your rooms. Shangri-La welcomes you. If you should wish to assume our habits of dress, you will find suitable garments. You will need to rest now. And later, I shall be most pleased to see you all at dinner. Mr. Chang. Please. I am happy to report that the plane has arrived. With Richard Conway? With Conway and four others. Excellent. Well, what are we going to do now? What we always do? Hughes! That is the coward's way out. You are in the midst of life. Do not seek death. It will find you. But choose the road that makes death a fulfillment. Gentlemen, a funny thing happened to me on the way to the airport. <laughs> Get alone to the outfit. Have kimono, we'll travel. We both look pretty silly. What is Rome? Do as the Romes do. Come on, let's get something to eat, take a quick look around the place, and catch the first train out of here. We've just crashed a plane in the middle of nowhere. Spend all day dragging ourselves up a mountain and you're looking for the nearest ticket office? Man, where do you think we're gonna go? Hmm, suits you. Thought I might find Chang here. No, sorry. I'm uh, not doing very well. So far I've failed to find him or a telephone, a telex. Telex. <laughs> Even a socket for my razor. <laughs> Hard luck. You better use mine. Thanks. Seriously, I must get in touch with my paper. Well, an hour or two won't make any difference, will it? <sighs> it does to me. I want to get this story off before we eat. And I want a few more peaceful moments before the world gets its claws into me again. Oh, well. In that case, I'll make a big sacrifice. I'll shave and shut up. Thank you, George. I'm very grateful. Until dinner.
as we all hold dear at the same time all the grandest things we possess these we value less so many small things can bring happiness love is an Joy. Mountains rise, mountains fall. You have nothing more to prove. You have climbed them all. Now you're here. May you Best thing to cheer me up since we got here. Now you're here. May you stay and share the joy. My friends, did you think I had forgotten you? Have you everything you need? Everything, thank you. Uh, where's Sally, Miss Hughes? She asked me to say she's not feeling well. It is nothing serious. I hope she's well enough to travel when we leave. Uh, Mr. Chang, I have some questions. Please, ask them. We all wish to return to civilization as soon as possible. Are you so certain you are away from it? Mr. Chang, I think I speak for all of us when I say that uh, your hospitality is quite remarkable and we're very grateful, but we're also anxious to go home as soon as we can. That is always the case, Mr. Conway. And even more urgent for some of us is to send cables. Unfortunately, we lack radio communication of any sort. It has always been a source of deep regret that the same mountains which allow us our splendid weather also prevent adequate wireless reception. Then perhaps you could send porters or uh, messengers of some sort. I would really like to tell my agent I'm safe. He's bound to have some bookings for me. <laughs> we have no porters or messengers. No porters, but... You were rescued by our own people who have never gone beyond the point at which you were found. To venture further would be too hazardous. How'd you get all this stuff brought here? Ah, yes. Well, depending upon favorable weather, of course, there are porters. 500 miles away who sometimes make the journey. They are our only contact with what you would call the outside world. How soon can we get in touch with them? In that respect, you are exceedingly fortunate. We are expecting a shipment from them at almost any moment. And when is almost any moment, Mr. Chang? Tomorrow? Next week? I cannot forecast the exact date precisely. Let me see. I believe... Um, Ah, yes, we have been expecting this particular shipment for about two years. <laughs> but I assure you, gentlemen, I shall endeavor to make your stay here as pleasant as possible. And now, if you will excuse me, it is getting late. I hope you will all sleep well. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Conway. Good night, sir. About two years. Do you believe all that stuff about the porters? I don't know. Don't you care? Not really. It's nice to be in a place where time doesn't matter. Yes, but you want to get out of here, don't you? I don't know what I want. 
George, something happened when I arrived. Did you ever go to a totally strange place and feel from the very first moment that you've been there before? Because that's what's happened to me. It's absurd, I know, but the feeling's so strong that I can't think of anything else. I've always in the past wanted to see what it was all about, to see what was on the other side of the mountain. Perhaps this is it. It's like coming home. Well, with me, it's the complete reverse. I can't wait to get back. <laughs> but I tell you what, if I mind my manners and don't rock the boat, will you seriously think about getting out of here soon? All right, we'll have a truce until we find out about this place. And then if we get out of here... If? We'll... Did I say if? <laughs> yes, you did. Hmm. Can I ask you a question? Were we brought here on purpose? Over 2,000 people live in the valley. And if so, what is the purpose? In addition to those here in Shangri-La. And what is Shangri-La? Who is it? You? Good heavens, no. Not I. Well, who, for instance? In time, you will know. You know, for a man who talks a great deal, it's amazing how unenlightening you can be. There are some things, my dear Conway, uh, I deeply regret I cannot discuss. Shall we continue? You know, in the outside world, you'd be a knockout. I bet people would fight to see you dance. I fear I shall never see your outside world. Never see it? <laughs> Why ever not? It is not possible. Am I then in some way on trial here, Mr. Chang? Oh, no. Like everyone else, you are on a pilgrimage through life. By chance, part of your voyage of discovery is here. By chance? Here, of course, we have more time for reflection. Sickness is unknown. Perfect health is the rule. And it is quite common for us to live to a very ripe old age. Indeed. And does that also apply to those who come here from the outside world? If it did not, Shangri-La would never have been built. How old is your oldest inhabitant? Hmm? Let me see. Considerably over a hundred years old. Considerably? Yes, still at work, when last I spoke to him. Climate and diet, these are important, of course, to keep you young. But we believe it is the lack of struggle in our way of life. How often in your countries do you hear the expression, he worried himself to death, or this thing or that thing killed him? Your lives are, as a rule, shorter. Not so much by natural death as by indirect suicide. Unfortunately true. Climate, diet, and harmony, you said, and somewhere a guiding mind, is that it? Is it not enough? What worries me is that it's a little like a dream from which I shall shortly but unpleasantly awake. You surprise me. <laughs> I surprise you. Yes. That you, who have written so much of better worlds, should think it a dream when you find one? Or is it that you fail to recognize one of your own dreams when you see it? And this is our school. This is where we start to prepare our young for the future. Why, 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 why? The world is a circle without a beginning and nobody knows where it really ends. Everything depends on where you are in the circle that never begins. Nobody Doesn't mean that you're small at all And just the way a tiny branch Is like a tree to a twig To someone else you are big The world is a circle without a beginning And nobody knows where it really is
At least they're partially wrong To someone else you are strong In the future, you shall have the pleasure of meeting her. <laughs> Sam. Sam, I had the strangest dream last night. I dreamt I swallowed a 50-pound marshmallow. And when I woke up, my pillow was gone. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting better. I thought so. You go on, I'll be with you. Okay, hurry it up. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were alone. What is it? Love it had a deck of cards. I thought you might like to play a game. Some other time, huh? Sure. I didn't think I could hold a card. Why am I like this? It helps talking to you. My little cold knot in my stomach starts easing up. A memory keeps coming back that I really considered dropping off this balcony. Would you have done so? I don't know. If Chang hadn't called me, maybe I would. That's what frightens me. What's happened to me? Perhaps you can answer that yourself. Sally, golden girl. I was always taught dreams could come true. That's terrific to believe when you're a kid. A little more difficult later on when you're a little more difficult. All that passionate involvement, men, causes. I went around agonizing about man's inhumanity to man and made a good living out of taking pictures of people with their heads blown off so that other people with their heads still on and usually under hair dryers could get a kick out of them before turning to the nearest recipe. One day it all made me sick. The dreams were over. That is very painful, but also necessary so that you may take the next step. The next step was to start taking pills to get the dreams back. The excitement, the loving, the feeling good with us. The kicks I got lasted about two and a half minutes. So you find out that's not the answer either. And now? Nothing. The end of the line. No. You had the courage not to jump. Which means? You must tell me. Answers? Where the hell are any answers? I don't know. Try, Miss Hughes. Inside me, I guess. Is that it? It would 
not be wrong to start then. May I help you with some tea, Mr. Conway? Thank you. Let me see. 19 plus 187 gives me a grand total of 206. You know, if you hadn't told me you were honest, Harry, I'd swear you were cheating. Oh, of course I'm cheating, Samson, and getting away with it. I mean, there's no fun playing cards if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of us, are we all as content as we seem here, or is there some delicious drug in our food? Or is all this a mirage? No, 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 my dear Mr. Conway, we employ no such methods in Shangri-La. To put it simply, we believe in moderation. We teach that virtue lies in avoiding excess. We rule with moderate strictness. In return, we are satisfied with moderate obedience. As a result, our people are moderately sober, moderately chaste, and uh, moderately honest. <laughs> then you're more than moderately fortunate. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Well, I Hello. brought you books. Oh, thank you. May I look at them? Yes. Do you ever have arguments over women? Oh, only very rarely. You see, it would not be considered good manners to take a woman that another man wanted. And supposing somebody wanted some particular woman so badly, he didn't care whether it was good manners or not? Well, in that event, it would be good manners on the part of the other man to... Uh, yes? to let him have her. That's very convenient. I think I like that. And uh, does this arrangement apply for women also? Of course. You'd be surprised, Mr. Conway, how a little courtesy all round can help to smooth out the most complicated problems. Thank you. But that's a happy ending. Good night. Good night. Good night. Excuse me. Just a minute. Yes, Mr. Conway? I'm in her quandary, and uh, I thought that you might be able to help me. I noticed you were having your course in elementary Chang. What is your problem? Well, Chang tells me that as soon as I meet a woman I like, I must be prepared to give her up if somebody else likes her as well, and I don't think I'm capable of doing that. When that happens... I think it has. When that happens, the important thing is to try and make the other fellow the one who must be courteous. I see. I hadn't thought of it like that. Perhaps you could help me with some other questions. I have so many, I hardly know where to begin. You want to know who I am and what I'm doing here? My name is Catherine, and I was born here. Who are you? Well, almost born here. It was just beyond the pass. My parents were explorers who couldn't rest until they'd seen everything. Unfortunately, they died just on the other side. And Chang rescued you? Faithful Chang. He and his men found me, barely alive. Here I've grown up, and here I've been happy. With no desire to leave? Absolutely none. So I should know a good thing when I see it. Is that it? That's it. Good night, Mr. Conway. My friends, you have seen our mountains, our valley, and our people. You have heard about our past. Now you are seeing our future. This is our festival of the family. A chosen couple perform a ritual honoring the newly born children. 
Start with a man, and you have one add on a woman, and then you have to add on a child, and what have you got? You've got more than three, you have what they call a family, living together, growing together, just being together, that's how it starts, three loving hearts, all pulling together, working together, just building you strong if things go wrong we'll still get along somehow living and growing together it just takes wood to build a house fill it with people and you have a home fill it with love and people take root It's just like a tree Where each branch becomes a family That's living together, growing together Just being together That's how it starts Three loving hearts all pulling together Working together, just building together, that makes you strong. If things go wrong, we'll still get along somehow. Living and growing together.
That's why I seem to be so unhurried. Some things just should be hurried, or they might frighten him away. Seems like we're part of two, two different, different worlds, worlds in the way we live. More than in just a few things. That means we both have a lot to give. Learning how we do things, sharing new things. Looking back, I see that I've always been alone all through my life. Maybe I knew when it was time love would find me. I must just let it find me, or it might frighten her away. Yes, it might frighten him away. If we rush, we may lose what we Improving your mind again, huh? You should try it. Yes. Yes, maybe you're right. Then perhaps I could understand what it is about this place that the rest of you seem to enjoy so much. Tell me, don't you ever give a thought to leaving here? No. I don't know what you left behind, but what I left behind, I'm not in such a hurry to see again. Ah. Don't listen to her, Maria. She was born to be a recluse. Hello, Maria. I saw you dance at the ceremonial. You were lovely. Thank you. I've read these and I've come back for more. Oh, I wonder what will happen when we've read them all. We'll be about 250 and need new glasses. You sound like you hate the outside world. Do you? Well, I don't love it. But what about London and Paris and the Greek islands and the Leningrad Ballet? You mean compared to here? Oh, Maria, you must be kidding. Look what you've got. There's all the time in the world to enjoy it. Time. Yes, there is time. Before George came, it didn't seem strange to spend my days in reading. Talk to myself, dance, drift through the days full of nothing but peace and quiet. It didn't seem too long, but it's different now. Oh, boy. Good old George. Take it from me, Maria. Shangri-La has a definite edge over New York City, not to mention Calcutta and the rest. But the way George describes it. Listen, honey, George is a nice guy, and I don't mean to knock him. But don't let him kid you that it's some sort of wonderland outside. So all you have is peace and quiet. <clears throat> you have a place here where you can breathe, with no violence, no cruelty. A place where people will take the time to care. George can have his rat race. I can do without it. On the list of the things that I will not miss, first of all is noise. On the list of the things that I will not miss is peace and quiet. I would like to try it. Different people look at life from different points of view. If you really want the things I have, just help yourself. I give it all to you. On the list of the things that I will not miss, I would mention crowds. On the list of the things that I will not miss is open spaces. Why can't we change places? Different people look at life from different points of view. If you really want the things I have, just help yourself. I give it all to you On the list of the things that I will not miss I would mention work On the list of the things 
That I will not miss his contemplation Sounds like a great vacation Different people look at life from different points of view If you really want the things I have Just help yourself I give it all to you Different people look at life from different points of view If you really want the things I have Just help yourself I give it all to you On the list of the things that I will not miss Most of all is rain On the list of the things that I will not miss Is too much sunshine Can there be too much sunshine? Different people look at life from different points of view People look at life from different points of view If you really want the things I have Just help yourself They're yours I give it all to you would be great in my new act. They should be so lucky. You look beautiful. Thanks, I guess. Oh, I mean, you looked beautiful before, but now you look beautiful. Tomorrow I've got something to tell you. What's wrong with today? I can't now. It's a secret. I'm afraid the truce is over. Why? If we don't get it straight now, we never will. Get what straight? Who wants to leave? And when and how? For a start, I want you to tell them what you told me, that we were brought here deliberately. Well, what's the point? They're perfectly happy. <sighs> they won't be when they find out. Will you tell them? No, and certainly not tonight. Then I will. Listen, everybody. My brother wants to explode a small bomb, but I think I'd better do it. Sit down, George. Do you realize that we are all prisoners here? No, we're not. We're guests. We were deliberately kidnapped. What is this? We have no proof of that. The pilot of our plane was a man from Shangri-La. May have been. Stop glossing over the facts. I want to get out of here. I can't do it alone. I need to know if anyone else feels as I do. Well, does anyone else want to leave? Mr. Conway! Mr. Conway! Ask him if you don't believe me. Why were we kidnapped and brought here, Chang? Mr. Conway, I bring you extraordinary news. Answer the question. Let him go. Richard, let him go! Mr. Chang, forgive my brother's determination to force the issue. You've been very kind and we appreciate it. But I think the time has come for you to be more open with us. Were we brought here deliberately, and if so, why? There is no time to answer questions now, Mr. Conway. You must come at once. The High Lama wishes to see you. Who is the High Lama? I thought you ran this place, Jack. Oh, no, I am only a humble member of the community. Please, Mr. Conway, Just, you just must... a minute. Will your High Lama answer our questions? That is possible. 
Then he's the man that I want to see. Richard. Tell him that I at least intend to leave here. I was here for five years before I was called. You cannot appreciate the overwhelming honor that has been bestowed upon you. It is unprecedented. Good evening, Mr. Conway. Please come in. Sit down near me. I trust you have been comfortable at Shangri-La since your arrival? I've liked it very much. But some of my friends, and in particular my brother, Puzzled by the mystery. Oh, I can understand that, Mr. Conway. Perhaps if I told you of Shangri-La's origins, things would become clearer. Thank you. A Belgian priest named the Father Pero was the first European to enter the Valley of the Blue Moon. When was that? It was the year 1747, when Father Pero stumbled into the valley, half frozen to death. One of his legs was so badly frostbitten, there being no doctor, he was forced to amputate it himself. He amputated his own leg? Yes. Oddly enough, later, when the natives came to trust him, he learned from them that his leg would have healed without amputation. With frostbite, that's impossible. Oh, no. This valley celebrates the natural life. And he recovered well. Soon he was making his way around the valley, taking a great interest in everything. He taught his own religion and the best of others, instructing the children, knowing how important education would be for future generations. He began building the lamasery of Shangri-La with one or two helpers. But after some years, hundreds of the natives who by now had come to respect him helped with the task. When it was finished, he was 108 years old. His life's work seemed over. He became weak and lay in his room for many weeks between life and death. And then a strange thing happened. He had a vision of the purpose of Shangri-La, of its entire meaning, and of his part in it. From that moment on, he began to recover. And how old was he when he died? my son. You're still alive, Father Pero. Sit down, my son. You may not know it, but I've been an admirer of yours for a great many years. Of mine, Father? Oh, not the Richard Conway, the public hero, the government servant, but the Richard Conway who once wrote there are moments in every man's life when he glimpses the eternal. That man seemed to belong here. In fact, 
It was suggested that someone be sent to bring him here. Uh -huh. So I was right. We were brought here. But uh, what possible use can I be to an already thriving community? If this community is to continue to thrive, then we need men like you here. Look at the world today. Is there anything more pitiful? Well, surely this is a time of crisis. But when has the world known any other time? What madness there is, what blindness, what unintelligent leadership. A furiously racing mass of bewildered humanity strengthening, not in wisdom, but in vulgar passions. The time must come when evil will destroy itself. I will not live to see that day. But you might, my son. And that is why you have been brought to Shangri-La. For when the day comes that the world begins to look for a new life, it is our belief that they will find their reservoir of hope here. So here we shall stay with our books and our music and our meditations. Here we shall be to guide the footsteps of a weary people. Here we shall be with our way of life. Based on one simple rule, be kind. And it is our hope that our brotherly love will then spread throughout the world. And when the strong have devoured each other, then, at last, the meek shall inherit the earth. I am tired now, my son. Will you come again? Yes, I will. for being away so long. Well, did you ask about well, the Richie, did you see him? Yes. I saw the High Lama. And I haven't the answers to all of our questions yet, but I will in time. And when I do, I'll tell you exactly what the situation is, particularly about going home. Until then, you'll all have to trust me. Smuggle it out, get those porters to help us. Correction, you bribe the porters. I got something better to do. Such as? Such as not sitting around worrying about how to spend money in a place where money isn't any good. But what about when we get out? Get out? How? Sam, you gotta be more practical. Trouble with you is you haven't got any inner resources. Who hasn't? What are you trying to tell me? Your life is made up of infinite possibilities and you're not realizing one of them. Not one. For instance? When you look at yourself, do you like what you see? If you like what you see, you're the person you should be Cause your reflection reflects in everything you do And everything you do reflects on you When you wake up each day, do you like how you feel? If you like how you feel, you've got nothing to conceal Cause your reflection reflects in everything you do And everything you do reflects on you Doing 
something for someone else isn't really for someone else it does twice as much for you as something you do just for yourself when you lay down to sleep do you like all your dreams if you like all your dreams life's as happy as it seems cause your reflection reflects in everything you do and everything you do reflects on you You said the other night that these farms around here needed better irrigation. Well, you are an engineer. Go irrigate! Yay! Excuse me. I was looking for your brother. He's not here. She seems to be quite taken with him. Hmm. Let's hope that beautiful young woman can talk more sense into him than I can. You spoke of her as young. My dear friend, I hate to disillusion you, but you must not be deceived by her appearance. Our way of life has preserved her youth and her beauty. She came here when she was 20. She was on her wedding journey, but her carriers lost their way in the mountains and the whole party would have perished but for meeting our people. They brought her here. That was many, many years ago. How many? You are more beautiful than the women of Thailand, more feminine than the women of France, more pliable than the women of Japan, more... Stop. Stop. I don't want to hear about all these other women. All I want to hear is that you won't leave me. Oh, I adore you. Uh, but... I can't stay here. There's so much I want to do with my life that I can't do here. Maria, if I could find a way, would you come back with me? There is no way. Well, there has to be. Tomorrow, I'm going up to the pass that leads out of here to see if it's guarded and to look for those porters, if they exist. They exist. They do? Then why didn't you tell me before? I hoped you would become contented, like the others. Con contented? Oh. Look, I have to get out of here. Please, will you come with me? Would you stay with me here if I said no? Then I will come with you. starts up in the hills all right but about halfway down it starts going the wrong way now if we put a dam here and these interconnecting bamboo pipes you'd have the whole valley you'd have the entire mountainside and just watch that stuff grow and no more women carrying buckets of water sam you're excited yeah yeah i guess it's been a long time a long time what oh since i was so excited <laughs> involved yeah a long time ago i used to work the land i guess i got waylaid somewhere along the line what happened nothing Come on. Forget it. I don't want to talk about it. Sam, I'm interested. Okay, does the name Simon Cosfield mean anything to you? Cosfield? Yeah, didn't he? That's me. I remember. American Consolidated Products. When the thing fell apart, you were gone and the money was too. I wasn't there because there wasn't any money. And it wasn't my fault. I'd worked hard and made a little bit. That little bit became a lot, so I built a corporation. That became a lot of corporations. I was a hero. It was the American dream. Everybody wanted in. I didn't ask them to. Nobody told them to buy. They just did. Overnight, the balloon bursts. The next day, I'm the biggest crook that the country has ever seen. I don't know what to do. So I started running. Anywhere I think that he won't find me. That's how I ended up in best school. 
Maybe here the running can stop. Maybe. Sam. I stop running here. You can too. Catherine has to leave you, so I want to introduce you to your new teacher of the day, your new expert, Mr. Lovett. Yay! Well, now, there you are. Here I am, and uh, where are we? <laughs> ah, success. You think that was funny, folks? You ain't heard nothing yet. <laughs> now, what are you learning? French. Well, that lets me out. I know nothing about French. A teacher should only teach what he knows, and all I know is uh, show business. I don't think they'd approve. You know, when I was a kid, the thing that got me was that every teacher I ever had only asked me questions and expected answers. <laughs> you too? Well, I'll tell you what I think. Any dummy can know the answers. It's the smart ones who know the questions. Question me an answer, bright and clear. I will answer with a question, clear and bright. Even though your answer may be wrong, my question will be right. Question me an answer. Answer with a question. 1492. What's the year that Babe Ruth hit his 60th home run? Who became the hero at the Battle of Bull Run? Learning can be lots of fun. Question me an answer bright and clear. I will answer with a question clear and bright. Even though your answer may be wrong, my question will be right. Question me an answer. Answer with a question. What's the way that Yankee Doodle really went to town? Cleaning up the atmosphere. What's the reason London Bridge is always falling down? You, you can, can learn things, things from a clown. Question me an answer bright and clear. I will answer with a question clear and bright. Even though your answer may be wrong, my question will be right. Question me an answer, answer with a question, on the good ship Lollipop. How did Christopher Columbus sail upon the sea? Underneath the circus top. Where did Cleopatra get to me for Gatoni?
Inconceivable. Father Perro, his story, and this place hidden away from the rest of the world. And then you come along and confuse me even more. Am I so strange? No, you're not. Nothing here is strange. And that's what's so confusing. I'm desperately trying to keep my emotional feelings and my spiritual needs from clobbering each other to death. You're very beautiful and very desirable. Like everything else beautiful that's happened to me here, I find it remarkable that it has happened to me here. And not out there. You know, I can't explain it, but everything seems familiar. This air, those beautiful gardens, you. This lamasery with its feet rooted in the good earth of this fertile valley, while its head explores the eternal. And I've been kidnapped, brought here against my will, which is a crime, a great crime. And yet I accept it as one would accept an act performed by a very dear friend. Can you tell me why? Perhaps because you've always been a part of Shangri-La without knowing it. I'm certain there's a wish for Shangri-La in everyone's heart. I've never seen your outside world, but I imagine it's full of millions of people who secretly wish to be in a beautiful place like this. <laughs> well, if they were, it wouldn't be beautiful for long. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Harry. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, my friends, all friends, and new friends, and a special thank you to Sally for arranging the candles. Twenty-one, how'd you guess? <laughs> well, here we go. Go ahead. Yeah! Well, this is a pretty happy day for me. Not just because it's my birthday, but uh, because I've come to a big decision. I've uh, decided to stay in Shangri-La, if they'll have me. Good, that's fine. Right. Now, wait a minute, hold it. I, I hope, Mr. Chang, that you'll go along with a great idea I've got. I shall be most interested to hear it, Mr. Lovett. Well, Mr. Chang, I know I, I, know I speak for all of us when I, uh, I say that uh, this place is terrific. 
I don't worry here, and, uh, and I sleep well. Confidentially, I've had some pretty rough times lately. A few bookings and audiences will. If they weren't throwing bread, they sat in their hands. But uh, these kids here, they, uh, they love me. You know, I took a little personal inventory about 10.30 last night, just before going to sleep, and I said to myself, Harry Lubbock, things are going pretty well for a change. And they are, so why not go for a run of the play contract, right? Well, down in school, those kids, terrific kids you got here, Mr. Chang. They're, they're very imaginative. They keep imitating me. Wanting to be like me. And uh, I thought it might be a, a good idea to give them a course in dramatics, teach them how to sing and dance, you know, sort of that big-time stuff. <laughs> Would uh, that be all right with you, Mr. Chang? Can I stay? Uh, watch it, Mr. Chang. He's liable to cause chaos in that school. I don't think so. We have a saying, the trees that bend a little to the harmless breeze will later grow to withstand the wild wind. Huh? <laughs> we shall be most honored to have you, Mr. Lovett. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> now, I'll, uh, now I'll cut the cake. Uh, <laughs> give me my cake. Oh. Chang! I want to talk with you, Mr. Chang. That famous tribe of porters, expected for two years, that'll take us all out of here whenever they arrive. Well, I've just discovered they have arrived three days ago, and there was never any intention that they should take us out of here. Isn't that right, Mr. Chang? I'm going with them, Richard. As for the rest of you, well, think about it. Mr. Conway! My friend, you must not let him go. The porters could only take him a certain distance. Beyond that is a wilderness through which he would never get out alive. You should have told me the porters were here. I could have prepared him for this. Talk to him. I'll try. But then he can listen to me. Richard. Richard. Be careful. He will want you to go with him. No. What shall I do, Catherine? Go and talk to Father Pirou. Yes, I will. And I need your help, Father, to stop him from leaving. I'm no longer able to help you. The responsibility is yours. My son, I'm going to die. I wish to place in your hands the future and destiny of Shangri-La. I knew my work was done when I first set eyes upon you. I've been waiting for you for a long time. I've sat in this room and seen the faces of many newcomers. I've looked into their eyes and heard their voices, always in the hope that I might find you. It's not an arduous task that I bequeath, for our order knows no rigid bonds. To be gentle and patient, to care for the riches of the mind, to reside here in wisdom while the storm rages without. It will be such a one, my son, as the world has not seen before. There will be no safety by arms, no help from authority, no answer in science. It will rage till every flower of culture is trampled and all human beings are leveled in a vast chaos. Ask yourself, has it not already begun? Do you really believe that I'll live to see the end of the storm? I do. That is why it is you who must preserve the fragrance of our history and add to it a touch of your own mind. Beyond that, I... my vision weakens. in a great distance in your world stirring 
in the ruins, stirring clumsily, but in hopefulness, seeking its lost and legendary treasures. They will all be here, my son. Hidden behind the mountains, in the valley of the blue moon, preserved in Shangri-La, as if by That's the story. He said, I place in your hands the future and destiny of Shangri-La. I now know that I found the answers to all the confusion and bewilderment that's plagued me for a long time. I found what I'm searching for. I don't know what to say to you. Do you really believe everything he told you? Yes, I do. Without any proof? The proof is in the man himself in everything I've felt here from the beginning. Doesn't the story mean anything to you? What could it mean to me? You're right, George. This is no place for you. And you should realize it's no place for you either. You're needed in the outside world where the problems are far more urgent and pressing than they are here in Shangri-La. Here, here you're just marking time. Besides, think of your obligations to the UN. I know the obligations. I know. But I've found peace here. And I've found love. And I must hold on to them. I'm going to pack and see to the others. Richard, I beg you to think again and change your mind. George, I'm staying. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I shall miss you. So will a lot of other people. So you won't be lonely. I've talked to the rest of them. They're staying too. 
So it'll just be Maria and me. Maria, what's she got to do with it? She's coming with me. You can't take her away. Why not? Don't you know what will happen to her if she leaves Shangri-La? She'll begin to live the happiest part of her life. That's what will She'll happen. She'll begin to live the last moments of her life. Her beauty is... She must stay here where she's safe. She's young and strong. She'll manage the trip, all right. George, listen, she can't make that trip. She is not young and strong. Chang told me that she came here 80 years ago. 80? What are you talking about? Oh, come on, Richard. You can't believe that. You've seen her. She's not a day over 20. Shangri-La will keep her youthful indefinitely. I see. And what if she leaves Shangri-La? Chang said she would quickly revert to her actual age. And you must believe that. Look, will you believe me if I prove you're wrong? And will you then see that if I'm right about Maria, I'm probably right about the rest, too? I'll die if I have to stay here alone now. George promised he wouldn't leave me. If it weren't for me, you'd never get out. It was I who bribed the porters. They were forbidden by the High Lama to take anyone out of here. Is that true? I was with her. They only took the bribe because he's dead now. But aren't you afraid to leave? You know what'd happen if you go. Happen? Ah, I suppose Chang told you that I am old. That is part of the myth of Shangri-La. Chang did tell you, didn't he? Yes. Look at me, Mr. Conway. Do I look like an old woman? Is this the skin of an old woman? Are these the eyes of an old woman? And in my heart, are these the feelings of an old woman? Do you believe I have been here for 80 years? Like us, she was kidnapped. They brought her here just two years ago. Well, I don't believe it. I can't believe it. She's lying. You're lying. Every word you've said is a lie. Now, come on, admit it. What reason would I have for lying? Look, Mr. Conway, the chances are we will never live through this terrible journey. But I would rather go out there with George and die in a snowstorm than stay here one minute more. But why have they told me this story? They need you here. Sally and the others have already found ways to be useful, but you're the one they were after. You had to be convinced. But your job isn't here, and you must realize that now. Are you telling me the truth? I am 20 years old, and I was brought here two years ago. I'm going to need your help on this journey. We both are. Please come with us, Richard. I believe her. <laughs> I once said to Chang that I was afraid this was a dream from which I might suddenly and unhappily awake. All right. I'll come with you.
Yes, Mr. Connor. Where's Catherine? Chang has given orders that she cannot be disturbed. But where is she? I must see her. I regret that is not possible, Mr. Connor. Richard! Richard, come on. I can't find Catherine. I'm sorry, but the porters won't wait. Richard, the porters won't wait. Does it, Harry? Not me, Sam. We can still go with him if you want to. He will return. Richard! Wait! 
They're leaving us farther behind every day. They're only trying to save themselves. We're too slow. I am sorry. I cannot go faster. I cannot move faster. Hey! 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 Richard! Help me! I must rest. I cannot go on any longer. I must rest. I'll carry her.
Doctor. How are you, Mr. Conway? I thought for a moment I was back again. Back again? Where? Where? How are you feeling? I don't know whether I've been mad and I'm now sane, or I was sane for time and now mad again. Mr. Conway? I do know my name. The whole world knows your name and wonders what happened to you. You were flying back from a UN peace mission when your plane disappeared. Peace mission? Did we succeed? Sadly, no. But there's always hope. Yes, hope. There must be that. found him wandering in the lower valley, he was totally lost, suffering from snow blindness and near starvation. Despite this, they had a hard time getting him to their village. So keen was he to get back into the mountains, to get to this place called Shangri-La. Shangri-La? Yes, that was in your report. But do you think... You'll hear about it from him. you arrived too late. He's gone. Gone? Shangri-La. On and on he talked about this fantastic place. He must return. He must return. Obviously right now that's what he's trying to do. But I've got to find him. It's my job to take him home. Your job won't be easy, Mr. Ferguson, even if you do find him. This obsession, if you will, kept him alive in the wilderness beyond all human endurance. Even here, this convalescence is due less to medicine than to that all-consuming passion to return. In Richard Conway's mind, Shangri-La represents the ultimate way of life. This uh, Shangri-La, do you believe it? Yes, I believe it. I believe it because I want to believe it. 